Hi, I'm Dr. Pratik Shah. I'm one of the consultant pediatric endocrinologists at Royal London Children's Hospital. And I'm really excited to see, to see you all. Um, and, and, and this is an excellent work which has been carried out by Ketotic Hypoglycemia International. And um, my research interest is looking into uh, managing children into hy with hypoglycemia and looking into various genetic disorders as well as management of various forms of hypoglycemia. As we all know, hypoglycemia is one of the most common presentation in children. Um, the first publication which had reported adverse neurodevelopmental outcome in children with hypoglycemia was over 30 years ago. And it is actually very well known now, and there are still cases and you know, publications about children suffering from hypoglycemia and causing um, significant neurodevelopmental issues. There has been various controversies in terms of what is a normal blood glucose levels. And as you've heard about the presentation uh, earlier, it is very important to remember that we should all consider the plasma glucose concentration and that should be evaluated in, in association with the presence of risk factors, the clinical examination and this clinical state of the child and presence of in intermediary metabolites and alternative fuels. And um, we all have to remember that sometimes we have to have an individualized approach to manage this group of children, taking account into patient safety as well as family preferences. And over the years now, there has been more and more um, insights into new pediatric hypoglycemia and various causes of hypoglycemia, as well as the implications of those hypoglycemia on children. And we also have to remember that the signs and symptoms can actually vary in different age groups. So first of all, what we need to think about is, do actually children have signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia or ketosis? And over the years, there have been numerous publications, and I would like to highlight a couple of publications which has been reported recently, that actually um, that children may not have any symptoms of hypoglycemia or ketosis. And in one of the study from uh, Switzerland, they reported that nearly up to 54% of children only had symptoms of hypoglycemia. And in another study, they showed um, that children with postprandial hyperenzymic hypoglycemia, they did not have any symptoms until they actually detected hypoglycemia on continuous glucose monitoring. It is also important to remember that actually children, even with diabetes and younger children, especially with diabetes, may also be asymptomatic at the time of hypoglycemia. So when we are looking at symptoms or signs of hypoglycemia in children, we all have to remember that the children may be asymptomatic when they are suffering from hypoglycemia or ketosis. Um, it is also, it, the another question is, is it important to know about the symptoms and signs of hypoglycemia? And yes, it is actually very important for us to know about the symptoms and signs of hypoglycemia because it's a medical emergency. It is very important for healthcare professionals to remember that this can actually cause and um, have an impact on the child. And we have to recognize this, um, this condition sooner so that we can actually initiate management quickly. It is also, again, important to remember that while we actually detect hypoglycemia, we can actually take critical samples at the time of hypoglycemia and do a hypoglycemia screen. So when they are asymptomatic, but if we do detect hypoglycemia, it is important to take critical samples of hypoglycemia screen. And also, at the same time, we have to remember the short-term and the long-term outcome of, of hypoglycemia on children. And as I mentioned earlier, is that there has been now numerous publications that actually shows um, neurodevelopmental outcomes of children suffering from hypoglycemia. And hence, it is again important to realize or remember that there can be various conditions that can cause hypoglycemia and, and recognizing that conditions early and managing those children quickly is really important. So we have to remember that there are various causes that can cause um, hypoglycemia in children. And the symptoms and signs of those conditions should be looked into. There are also other illnesses like diarrhea, vomiting, fever, that can also actually contribute to hypoglycemia. In one of the studies uh, reported by Lauren Daly in 2003, they reported that up to 25% of children 
had severe hypoglycemia when they presented to emergency department and they were diagnosed with ketotic hypoglycemia. So again, this is really important to remember that this can be very common presentation that can um, that you know, that children can present with uh, with hypoglycemia, and it is important to remember that they may not have signs or symptoms um, of hypoglycemia at the time of presentation. Um, we also have reported recently several syndromes that can cause hypoglycemia in children, and one of the uh, reports which uh, the condition that can cause ketotic recurrent ketotic hypoglycemia is Canani Lenz syndrome. However, there are other various syndromes that has been reported um, that can cause hypoglycemia in children like Kabuki syndrome, Costello syndrome, Down syndrome, Russell Silver syndrome. And as I mentioned that actually the symptoms and signs can vary uh, in different age groups. And hence it is really important for us to remember that actually children can present with the various symptoms and signs um, at different age groups. Um, however, also we have to remember that recurrent hypoglycemia can sometimes actually um, make them hypoglycemia unaware. And that's something again, we have to think about that when children are not having any um, symptoms of hypoglycemia, whether they have been having recurrent hypoglycemia. So let's now come to the symptoms and signs of hypoglycemia in children. Um, as I said, children can be asymptomatic and there has been numerous publications that shows that up to 40 to 50% of children can have asymptomatic hypoglycemia. But there can also be non-specific symptoms or they can have physical features of underlying Ill condition. But when we talk about the symptoms and signs, they can vary from hunger or poor feeding in a baby or a, in an infant, sweating, lethargy, weakness or tiredness, fast heartbeat or tachycardia, or even some older children can complain of palpitations. They can become pale or they can have change in their color or become sinus. They can have shakiness or tremors. And sometimes children can be quite unsteady and when, while they are walking. There are also, they can also have symptoms of blood vision or staring or also have headache or poor concentration. They can also complain of dizziness or confusion or sometimes change in behavior. And in severe cases, they can have apnea or loss of consciousness or, and, and, and if not treated, they can also have seizures. And there have been also rarely um, death has been reported in children. And now going into symptoms and signs of ketosis. Now we all know that ketosis can be you know, can present very acutely and then make, can make child very unwell. And they can present with symptoms like nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, muscle cramps, headache, lethargy. And in, in, in severe cases, it can actually cause um, coma and polypnea. That means for small breathing where they are actually have a very typical breathing pattern and which is really serious condition. And hence it is really important to understand the symptoms of ketosis, especially when they're presenting in, in, in hospital. They can also have characteristic aromatic smell on the breath, which is due to acetone. And if obviously it's not treated, they can develop ketoacidosis, which is an emergency condition and that children have to be um, managed very quickly. Um, and sometimes when children have got chronic ketosis, that means if they've been suffering from ketosis for long term, they can actually result in poor growth, weight loss or poor appetite. They can also have elevation of liver enzymes and also osteoporosis. So we have to think about that one side, yes, there are children who can have hypoglycemia and they can be asymptomatic, but at the same time, ketosis can also sometimes be asymptomatic. And when especially children have got chronic ketosis, they can actually result in other features. And that's something we need to keep in mind. So I would really like to thank all my colleagues at my hospital and, and, and internationally, but for, and most importantly, the patients and families who um, have been working for many, many years. And I would also like to congratulate Ketotic Hypoglycemia International for conducting this fantastic conference. Thank you very much. Hi, Pratik. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Hi, can Patrick. You, I, hi, can you hear me? Yes, and I'm so happy to have I you here today. I, 
for for one sort of for for a minute i felt that okay i don't have any questions to answer then that's a great relief <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of questions sorry we have okay. a lot of questions so okay. just sit in tight okay okay one of the question is it okay for my son to have a blood glucose of 2.5 mole when he is not being symptomatic so um 2.5 millimoles per liter so because you've got i think 70 countries representing in this conference i think i better tell you milligrams in deciliter will be about um 45 milligrams per deciliter so so yeah, or 2.5 or 45 milligrams per deciliter. So it's um, something which is not normal. Um, obviously, it depends on the clinical setting. Um, and if we if we are kind of seeing a child with that blood glucose level, or even below 2.5, below 45 milligrams per deciliter, we would generally um, take the critical sample for hypoglycemia screen. So um yes it, it obviously depends on the circumstances but generally we would treat any you know we would like to take critical samples at that blood glucose level and and treat it and, and treat as hypoglycemia thank you so much Patik. and then we have a question why do doctors say not to test the blood glucose and the ketones unless our child has symptoms even though our son is not showing symptoms when he's critical. Yeah, um, again, I think we just what David um, mentioned, you know, that sometimes, you know, when we are not aware of what the condition is or when we don't know um, about the condition, we always take it as, take it as, as normal. And, and I also do come across that in my clinical practice as that there is a lot of... Um, um kind of advice given as oh, actually your child did not have any symptoms and you know it's fine but as i mentioned in my presentation and then there is enough evidence as well that actually you know recurrent hypoglycemia would make our brain function at a much lower blood glucose level and we do become hypoglycemia unaware so um it is very important for us to actually know that if you know, especially if a child is having asymptomatic, uh, is asymptomatic either at the time of ketosis or, or um, you know, hypoglycemia, we need to know that is this something that is happening for some time because that's why the, the, the brain is now functioning at a much lower level of blood glucose or even having high ketones and they may not have symptoms. So um, it is really important to monitor it um, and, and monitor glucose as well as ketones um, and that is actually leading to the next question i'm just checking who it's from but it's a brilliant question it's from kelsey she's asking how can we get our asymptomatic child get back to experiencing these symptoms of ketotic hypoglycemia um i think it, it varies and it is also on on an individual basis um Sometimes it can take, you know, long time. It, you know, it can take years for you know children to to become symptomatic, and and you know generally we struggle with obviously with younger children who obviously are not able to recognize those symptoms. And as the children, you know, they get older, um, they may be able to understand some of the symptoms um, or some of the things that might be happening or they might be experiencing at that time. Um, but it can take a very long, long time. And most important thing is that, you know, that we need to diagnose or we need to promptly um, diagnose um, ketotic hypoglycemia and managing it quickly. Because what we don't want to do is leave it very long because that has got a huge impact. And I think we lost Dr. Patik Shah in a great Q&A. And now he might be back. That's what happened. Sorry, Patik, we just lost you. Uh, now yeah, you're I, back I, to finishing your, your question. Okay. Uh, you, can you, did you hear the last bit? I'm not sure what. No, I think we just need the last, last few sentences before we go move okay. forward. So, what I was saying is that it's more important to make sure that we um, monitor um, children for ketones and, and blood glucose frequently because you don't want to leave them for very long 
And actually, that will obviously have impact in terms of their long term outcome as well. But also, that's where we will need to make sure that as they grow older, hopefully they will start developing some kind of symptoms. 